We're in Lost Dutchman State Park just off of Highway 87 near Apache Junction, Arizona. And we decided to just stop and answer a few more questions. So first off, someone asked, what speed do we drive? Well, that kind of depends on where we're at and what the speed limit is, uh, of course. But um, I'd say in California, we've always been 55 and below when we're towing the uh, fifth wheel. And that's actually a state law, I believe, that you have to go 55 uh, miles per hour or less when you're towing in uh, in California. Right. Now, uh, I'd say on average over the different western states we've probably been 55 to, to 60 and then a little bit more in areas where some of those places the speed limit's 80 and it's actually safer for us to go a little bit faster on those very uh, even uh, level smooth uh, roads like that. But yeah. uh, the main thing is just to be vigilant and always, always, always make sure that you got enough room to stop and that uh, you're driving within the, the uh, parameters of the, that the conditions will allow, you know, if it's right. raining or icy or... Yeah. And as far as, uh, you know, the, just the power of the truck and being able to pull it, as long as you're on flat ground, it's pretty easy to maintain the speed limit and stay in the flow of traffic. Of course, if you're going uphill, you're going to want to stay in that right lane because you're definitely going to slow down going uphill. Yeah, we've actually done quite well going up hills. I've been surprised <laughs> that we've had to actually pass at yeah. times because we were able to maintain the speed limit. And that happens quite a bit, but there's times where we'll uh, take off from a, a dead stop and have to go up a hill and of course that's yeah, going to take a little bit. Yeah, that's going to definitely take some time. But overall <laughs> we're basically following the the speed limit and the the conditions and uh, you know I, I'm not just saying that to, to be <laughs> legal here I'm just saying that it, it warrants it you yeah. know pulling the fifth wheel we're just always thinking about safety. Yep. We've been asked what kind of RV park or campground do we like the best? Free ones? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well I prefer the wilderness. I, I love it, especially if it has like a river or a stream or a lake or something nearby, but definitely uh, remote. I, I just love being in the, in the wilderness. I'm not saying I don't want any services around and we do need Wi-Fi here and there, at least uh, cellular service. So, but yeah, I would, I would go with uh, the, the wilderness. And of course that changes on what our objectives are. You know, if we're going to a national park you know, we want to be in proximity to it or in it, you know, or, you know, just other locations. It just depends on what we're doing. You know, we, we obviously look for safe and clean and, you know, just... Uh, yeah, I like if, if there's just a little bit of space between the RVs. Yeah. It's, it's kind of difficult when you open your door and you're afraid you're going to hit the door of the person next to you or something like that. If they've got a little bit of room, that helps. Um, I do like the wilderness and the trees and things like that, but I also do like hookups. So. Yeah, we definitely like the hookups from time to time, and well, as often as possible. Yeah. And, you know, we have been in very cramped, tight spaces before, and that's primarily because that park just happens to be in proximity to what we want to do, and we don't plan on being in the RV that much. We plan on being outdoors. So. It's, it's really not that difficult when we have to do that sometimes. And we often meet people that are very close to us in <laughs> yeah. proximity that feel the same way. You know, it's not their first pick, but that's just the way it is. And some of those places end up being quite nice. Yeah. You know, we stayed at a decent one near Zion that was probably the yeah. tightest thing we've yeah, ever squeezed into really in terms of a small <laughs> lot. Not hard to get into as like some of them, but definitely small. A question that keeps coming up in different ways from different angles essentially boils down to uh, what are some of the day-to-day -day challenges that we deal with in an RV that we might not have previously had to deal with and how do we manage that? <laughs> and for me I'd say it's getting things in and out of cupboards and cabinets. If you live in an RV you have to utilize all of your space and all of your space is taken up by things that you use all the time. So if you want to get a particular pan or bowl or whatever out of your cabinet, you're probably going to have to take some things out, get that thing, Definitely. put it back in, and it's a little bit of a hassle putting it away and things like that, but I mean, it's not that big a deal, you get used to it, but it's definitely something that's probably going to be a change in an RV as opposed to being in a house with more room. Yeah, and there's things that I get out and use, like maybe lighting sometimes for doing video projects or something like that. And it, 
it's basically got to sit out and be moved around because if I put it away, then it's it's a lot more work to get it out a day later or, or something. So that's been uh, quite a challenge. Can you think of anything else? That's, um, uh, probably the only other thing would be the sewage issue. You oh, yeah. kind of have a different uh, <laughs> relationship with your sewer system than you do in a house. Yeah, usually in a house, <laughs> just to keep it clean here, you basically just flush and you, you, you your mind stops there. You don't, yeah. you don't think about, gee, I wonder where that is now or I'm going to have to deal with that later. Uh, when you flush in an RV, you are going to have to deal with it later. Yeah. And so you just want to kind of make sure that everything that you're using is, is appropriate for the task and that you're uh, doing things the right way and and it, it just it makes it easier it's still something that you have to do you have way more of an intimate relationship <laughs> with that type of thing in for an sure. RV but uh, we've managed to keep clean and, and do it good uh, for a while now and, and we've learned to do it more frequently so yeah. that it's not as much of a job when when we have to do it but by and large it it stays clean but that would probably be one of the biggest things that yeah, we've had to deal with yeah definitely a big difference from day -to -day challenges. being in a house to an rv for yeah. sure and i maybe the only other thing for me that comes to mind is being around others sometimes in the rv park and not that i don't want to be around other people but you're so close that uh you you, you pick up their their noise or their entertainment or whatever they're doing or maybe you just want some time to to just sit out and not have to hear other things or stuff like that but uh, you know it it's not that big of a deal because usually we're off doing something but uh, that that's definitely different because we weren't that close right. to neighbors yeah. in our in our <laughs> definitely house definitely an adjustment yeah we've been asked if we would consider some type of tech job while on the road i'm going to let you take that one <laughs> Well, yes and no. I mean, th we have run into people who are uh, actively working as either software tech or some type of technical support uh, over the phone. Uh, that type of work to me requires that we have a good um, phone connection at all times, which right. isn't always possible. And it tends to tie you to certain hours and things like that. Unless you're doing it completely freelance where you set up appointments, uh, it, it probably doesn't appeal to me uh, as much as it does to some other people that can work that into their plans. However, uh, when you're stationary in a, uh, a large park, you know, I have thought of doing uh, computer repair and troubleshooting and things like that for people and I'm completely open to that type of thing. But as far as taking a, a te tech job with a corporation on the road, it's, it's just not uh, on, uh, you know, anything that I uh, can see fitting in uh, into our travels. But there's other people, like I said, that, that definitely get by with doing that and do quite well. So it's it basically depends on what you have going and yeah and, uh, um, how it fits unfortunately in. I am not very tech savvy so it definitely wouldn't be a fit for me <laughs> <laughs> we often get questions about our dog Barkley um, why isn't he with us or, or we love to see him and things like that and we generally take Barkley every single place that we possibly can and sometimes when you don't see him in videos he's certainly laying down at our feet yeah. but uh, today we, we don't have him uh, with us it just depends on where we're going and usually we'll leave him uh, back with uh, friends or family or a lot of times he'll just be in the RV uh, running around uh, alone and uh, usually reclined in my chair yeah. and uh, sucking up the air conditioning or whatever uh, at, is appropriate at the time of the year but anyway uh, people have asked what kind of dog he is and think he's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and recently he's had some health problems so people have also been asking about uh, you know his his current status and he had some hearing issues he had a, a pretty bad ear infection and was not able to hear at all completely no sound whatsoever and fortunately after a round of antibiotics and treatments and ear washes and all sorts of things he, I'm happy to say, is back to, I think, pretty close to yeah. 
his normal hearing again. So we are really, really excited about that. Yeah, his normal hearing, which is selective hearing, <laughs> yes. because there's there's a lot of times when you you could uh, you know talk to him and he wouldn't even lift yeah. his head. It just he will ignore on. you, but yeah. yeah. So, but he he does uh, respond now to slight little taps on the door when we're outside, and we'll tap on it, and he'll come running barking. So it's it's just such a delight because he was absolutely as far as we can tell completely deaf even when the um, or, or right at yeah. as deaf as you could be without being completely I guess because yep. <laughs> even the, the vet had checked him out and found the same to be true but he's he's done remarkably well and we're we're so happy we felt so bad for him <laughs> having to go through that but he's he's up and around and, and doing well and we hope to get him in some upcoming videos and uh, that's about <laughs> it for Barkley yep. for today <laughs> Well, that's it for this question and answer video. We sure love answering your questions, so please feel free to post them in the comments area of this video, and we'll get to them just as soon as we can. And don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.